Hi, and welcome to this video about single proxosomal protein deficiency diseases, in particular X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy and Refsum disease. X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, or XALD, is the most frequent proxosomal disease, with 1 in 20,000 or 50,000 people having the disease. It is a single proxosomal protein deficiency caused by the mutation of ABCD1 gene that codes for adrenoleukodystrophy protein, or ALDP. ALDP is needed to make heterodimer of the ABC binding cascade protein, ABC, which transports very long chain fast fatty acids through the proxosomal membrane from the cytosol. XALD causes ALDP to form no protein or homodimer protein, which is unable to transport very long chain fatty acids into the peroxisomes where they can be degraded. This causes the characteristic accumulation of very long chain fatty acids in the cell, especially C24 and C26 saturated fatty acids. Very long chain fatty acids are toxic to many cells due to the different physiological properties from long chain fatty acids. And the accumulation of very long chain fatty acids causes membrane disruption and cell death in oligodendrocytes, especially those producing myelin, by affecting the mitochondria and calcium homeostasis. Therefore, a buildup of very long chain fatty acids in XALD cells causes myelin in neural cells to break down and the atrophy of cells in the adrenal cortex. The ABCD1 gene is found at XQ28 and is X-linked recessive. This causes it to affect males more than females, as they only need a mutation in their one chromosome to cause the disease, where women need mutations in both. Although some female carriers can present mild symptoms of XALD, the mutations at ABCD1 gene vary, with around 60% of the mutations caused by missense mutations. However, there has been no correlation found between the genotype of the mutation and the phenotype of XALD. Diagnosing XALD involves clinical presentation, brain imaging, and biochemical analysis of very long chain fatty acids in the plasma. Initial symptoms include the changes in behaviour and intelligence, impaired vision and hearing, seizures, and limb, and limb weaknesses. MRI scans are then used to investigate for characteristic lesions in the preto occipital white matter. However, this is only found in cerebral forms of XALD. Biochemical assays are the final test to confirm the diagnosis of XALD. The test analyses the concentration of very long chain fatty acids, C26 saturated fatty acids and C24 saturated fatty acids, especially in comparison to C22 saturated fatty acid. C22 saturated fatty acid, which is able to be degraded in XALD, so as normal plasma levels in comparison to the other very long chain fatty acids. Mutation analysis can be performed, however it does not provide any more information about the phenotype of the patient, although it can be used to understand more about the ABCD1 gene and its mutations and provide genetic counselling to female carriers. There are different phenotypes of XALD with varying ranges of symptoms from asymptomatic, mild to extreme. They are characterised based on the age of onset and the organs predominantly affected. The most severe form of XALD is the childhood cerebral form. It affects children aged 2 to 10 and is caused by adrenal insufficiency and neurological dysfunction. It affects behaviour, academia and vision. Its very rapid progression leads to a vegetative state after around 2 to 4 years and death soon after. Adolescent and adult cerebral forms differ from childhood cerebral form in the age of onset. Symptoms usually arise in around ages 11 to 21 for adolescents and over 21 for adult form. They have similar symptoms and deterioration to the childhood cerebral form and is often presented similarly to other psychiatric disorders including schizophrenia. Adrenomyeloneuropathy, AMN, varies from the cerebral forms of XALD. Symptoms arise usually, usually around age 20 to 40 and involve the spinal cord. It causes progressive stiffness of peripheral limbs, sphincter disturbances and impotence. Cerebral and adrenal aspects can also occur in many AMN patients, which have similar symptoms to the cerebral forms previously mentioned. Approximately 40 to 50 percent of women who are carriers of the XALD mutation present AMN-like symptoms in middle age. These can often be misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis. 
As XALD is a genetic disease, it is hard to treat the cause of the disease. Symptomatic therapy is used to improve the quality of the life of the patient by treating the symptoms that the disease causes. However, it does not correct the disease. Dietary therapy has so far been disappointing. The idea is to reduce the levels of very long chain fatty acids. It is either used by restricting the diet or using Lorenzo's oil, which is, use, is ingesting monounsaturated fatty acids to reduce the synthesis of very long chain fatty acids. Bone marrow transplantation of wild type hematopoietic cells enter the central nervous system. Donor cells have the ability to degrade very long chain fatty acids, which stops the progression of XALD. However, it is only effective in early stages of the disease. Refson's disease is a single proxosomal enzyme disorder caused by a faulty phytonoil CoA hydroxylase enzyme. It should not be confused with infantile Refson disease, which is a proxosomal biogenesis disease. The disease is caused by an autosomal recessive mutation in the PHYH gene, or in some cases the PEC7 gene. Refson disease symptoms usually present in late childhood and include the deterioration of night vision and progressive retinitis pigmentosa. It progresses to deafness, polyneuropathy, and cardiac arrhythmias. Testing for Refson disease involves the measuring the, the concentration of plasma of photanic acid, and a positive result is a concentration above 200 micromoles per litre. Unlike many other proxosomal diseases, changing the diet to reduce photanic acid is used as a therapy to reduce progression of the disease. Photanic acid is usually formed from chlorophyll metabolism, so a restriction of meat and dairy from ruminant animals such as cows reduces pl plasma phytanic acid levels.